Hey guys, this is Timmy from Link Building HQ. Welcome to the final part of our SEO for Beginners series. Yep, that's right, we started this series a few weeks ago with our SEO 101 video and went on to cover a range of other topics like crawling, indexing and ranking, keyword research, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, and local SEO. Today we'll be concluding this series with yet another crucial aspect of SEO, something that helps you track and make sense of all your SEO efforts, measuring your SEO performance. After putting in all that hard work, it's important that you measure how far you've come in executing your SEO strategy by analyzing the results it brings. And that's what this video is all about. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what factors to look at to understand whether your strategy is yielding the desired results or if you need to take a different course of action. Now, one of the most common struggles for all SEOs is to deal with the heaps of data that is available to them to gauge if what you're doing is right or wrong. At some point, you need to ask questions like, which direction is my SEO strategy going in? Do I need to tweak my strategy to bring in better results? How do I drive tangible results from SEO? By defining the KPIs that are most important to you and measuring your performance against those set KPIs, you can get the answer to all those questions. Now the KPIs you set can depend on a number of factors. The size of your business, the niche you operate in, the competitive landscape, can all influence how you define your KPIs. But the important thing is knowing what's at stake. For example, if one of your objectives is to increase organic visitors by 25%, you should know what factors to look at to know whether you're on course to achieve that objective or not. So with that, let me share with you the most important factors that you need to consider in assessing whether your SEO campaign is a hit or if you need to take it in a new direction. I'll start with organic traffic. So it's no secret that most people start doing SEO to increase organic traffic. That's kind of a no-brainer. And it's actually one of the most important metrics to consider. So when your organic traffic increases over time, it primarily tells you a couple of things. Number one, the keywords in your content match what the users are searching for. And number two, your website is outranking competitors on SERPs. And as opposed to paid traffic, the audience from organic traffic will find your website more consistently and will stay on your website longer. So the best ways to check your organic traffic is by using Google Analytics. In fact, Google Analytics will help you assess quite a few other metrics discussed in this video. So once you're logged in, click on the Audience tab and then hit Overview. Then tap on the Add Segment button and choose organic traffic. And finally, set a specific time period. Keep in mind, it takes time for SEO to work its magic, so you need to select a time frame accordingly. All right, next up is keywords ranking. This tells you if you need to continue with your current keywords optimization efforts or ditch them completely. For example, you may see that you're ranking on the number 10 spot for one of your target keywords. So you decide to give it a push by outreaching to relevant publishers and you eventually earn a few backlinks. And after a while, you see you're now ranking at the third spot for that same keyword. You now know what you did works. So you need to do more of the same. This is only possible when you're closely monitoring your keywords ranking. So if you've tried everything to rank a keyword, but you're just not getting the results you want, it wouldn't be a bad idea to shift your targeting towards less competitive but equally relevant keywords. We use Ahrefs to track the rankings of different keywords. It has a rank tracker feature that tells you your current position, your average position over a particular period, your visibility, and so on. If you're looking to up your keyword research game, I'll leave a link to a video we did on it. Go check it out. Number three, click-through rate. In the SEO world, clicks are the main currency. At the end of the day, your ranking doesn't matter much if it's not generating sufficient traffic for your website. It's a pretty straightforward metric, and it's calculated by dividing the number of clicks with the impressions or views your link has received. It's important to note, however, that the quality of the clicks matter a lot here. A searcher who has no intention of converting but still clicks doesn't do a lot of good for you. 
One way to measure your CTR is to go to search traffic in your Google Search Console, and then select search analytics and choose clicks, impressions, and their ranks. Export this as an Excel file. Add clicks for all positions, and then divide by the impressions to get an overview of your CTR. And as I said earlier, don't view your CTR as a standalone factor. Instead, combine it with something like a conversion rate to see how many of those clicks were actually valuable for you. Number four, quantity and quality of backlinks. Backlinks are one of the most important ranking factors. A decent number of quality backlinks means that you have high authority and credibility, which leads to a better ranking. So measuring them is equally important. Again, a tool like Ahrefs is super handy. Just put in your website's URL and it'll pull insights like domain ranking of the linking websites, the traffic, number of keywords, etc. Keep monitoring your backlinks profile periodically to see how it is performing in relation to your competitors and make improvements accordingly. Number five, bounce rate. All right, let me say this plain and simple. A high bounce rate is a problem that you need to fix ASAP. A high bounce rate means that users visit your link and immediately hit the back button. As an SEO, that is not a good thing. There can be a few reasons why you're having a high bounce rate. People don't find the content on your page useful. Your page load time is too high. Or maybe your page has a poor user experience. Regardless of the reasons, when users bounce from your page, it sends a bad signal to Google, which ultimately takes a hit on your rankings. So any bounce rate which is above 40% should be looked into right away. Again, you can go to Google Analytics to check your overall website's bounce rate, and you can also break it down to check page by page bounce rate. Number six, pages per visit. One factor which you can check along with your bounce rate is pages per visit. It broadly measures how compelling searchers find your content and how intuitive the navigation is. If your goal is to increase traffic on a particular page, then a low pages per visit number is not bad. However, to increase brand awareness and customer loyalty, you'd want this number to be high. Investigate reasons why some of your pages are not getting the traffic you want and make fixes accordingly. Number seven, scroll depth. Now scroll depth tells you how far searchers scroll each of your pages. It measures the 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% scroll points, sending a Google Analytics event for each one. It's important to know if they're reaching the business end of your content or not. If not, try and use different multimedia or contact forms to push the most important content higher up on your page. You can use Google Analytics to set up scroll depth tracking. So guys, it's now time to wrap up this video, but before we do, I'd just like to quickly add a couple of things. Number one, always keep in mind that SEO takes a lot of time and effort to show results. The most important thing, which is true for anything you do, is being patient. Keep monitoring the results and make changes along the way. Don't chase every shiny new concept. Just keep following the general best practices from Google and know that big algorithm updates won't do any harm as long as you're doing the right things. And number two, it's quite clear that a well-managed SEO campaign can bring in great results. So if you're doing the right stuff, Proving the value of SEO to your clients and management shouldn't be hard. For example, you can use paid search data to show the cost of acquiring the traffic through paid search and compare it with the SEO cost. I'm sure there'll be a significant difference. Or you can cumulatively see the ROI that your SEO campaigns are generating. It's all about showing the people who call the shots that SEO, if done right, is one of the most cost-effective ways of driving results for their business in the long run. And now we come to the end of this video. We sincerely hope that this series was able to make things clearer when it comes to SEO. This can be your foundation to further build upon your understanding and to practically implement the tactics that you've learned along this journey. Don't forget to subscribe and keep following our channel. We'll be bringing in plenty of useful content for you. Until next time, this is Timmy signing off.